Hello, welcome to DIY Machines, where in this build, I'll show you how to make your own YouTube subscriber counter. It's low cost, about £14 or $16 to build. It doesn't need you to acquire a YouTube API key, and if you don't want to, you don't need to solder anything together. Let's get started. You're gonna need a few things to build your own. You'll need some plastic. I use some black PLA plastic. Uh, you don't need very much. You'll also need a series of four Max7219 dot matrix displays, a low cost Wemo D1 microcontroller, five male to female breadboarding wires. Now, if you're going to be soldering yours together, you just need five lengths of wire, a mini breadboard to hold everything together, and five M3x10 bolts. To use these, you can screw the back cover on and remove it later, and you'll also be able to continually adjust the display arm. Though if you're feeling confident, you can go ahead and glue it in place instead. To help you source these components, you'll find links in the description below to each one of these items. The first thing we need to do is print the front and back parts of the housing. I printed mine in black PLA, and I printed mine at a 0.15mm layer height. There is no need for supports as all of the parts in this project have been designed to print easily without supports. Whilst we wait for that part to print, we can assemble and test the electronics. The first thing to start with is to put our D1 microcontroller onto our breadboard. Now our D1 microcontroller has a USB port at one end. We'll be using this to program and power our YouTube subscriber once it's complete. So when you mount it on your breadboard, I'd suggest putting your pins two holes from the front and one in from the side. If we take a look at our display module, you'll see on the back it should be marked with in out, in out, in out, and one end marked with the names of the various connections. This is the end we'll want to connect to our breadboard. So if you take your five breadboarding wires, put the five female ends onto your board. Now the wire going from CLK, which is the green one in this case, wants to be connected to pin D6 on our breadboard. Then the wire from CS, yellow in this case, to D7. The wire from DIN to pin D8. Ground to ground. And then VCC to the 3.3 volts. Now we take our USB cable and plug it into the microcontroller. And plug the other end into your computer, open the Arduino IDE, and we'll edit and upload the code. I'll show you how now. There are three lines that need editing at the top of the code. The first one is where you need to put your SSID. This is the name of your wireless network. In the next line, you need to put the password for your wireless network. And then in the third line, you need to put your YouTube user ID. To find your user ID, sign into your YouTube account and then in the top right, click your account icon and then settings. Now, on the left hand side of your screen, choose advanced settings. This is where you'll find your unique user ID. Copy and paste this into your code. If something's wrong, you'll see an error message pass along your screen such as YouTube error. If you see this, the first thing to do is to power your project off and back on. Sometimes this is just a temporary blip. If you're still seeing the error message, go back and double check your code. Have a look at your Wi-Fi SSID, double check you've typed in your password correctly, and also check that you've copied across your YouTube channel ID correctly. If it's worked absolutely fine for you, we'll go ahead and we'll fit these electronic parts now the first part to go into our 3D printed housing is our display module. You want to make sure that you put it in the right way or your text will be scrolling back to front, upside down. So when fitting the display inside the case, make sure that the curved base of our display case is facing towards you and that the wires coming from our display module are pointing out to the right. This does mean that the text is upside down on your module, but don't worry, that's how it's supposed to be. To install it, put a dab of glue in each of these corners, only a small amount, and then pop your display into place. I'm going to use hot mount glue because I can undo that later if I need to.
Once the glue has dried on your display model, we can put the microcontroller into position at the other end. For this, all you need to do is pop the breadboard in and slide it all the way to the left. Then before we fit the back plate on, pop your USB cable through the bottom of the housing and plug it into your microcontroller. Tuck your wires in place and then you can lower the back plate into position. If you'd like to at this point, there are two screw mounting holes here where you can wall mount it. But I'm going to go ahead and show you how to add an adjustable bracket on the back so that we can mount it up on top of our monitor. To do this, you need to print two more parts. This is the arm and arm mount. Again, I printed mine at 0.15 millimeters and printed it in black plastic as that's what I printed the rest of the model in. Once these two parts are printed, you'll want to join them together with the remaining screw. And then once that's done, you can glue the arm onto the back of the body. Now to fit it on your monitor, place it on top and then loosen the screw on the back. You can then adjust the arm to raise the display in the right place and retighting the screw. And there you go, there's your display mounted. Now if like me you'll be using your display in a brightly lit room, you may find the display a little bit difficult to see. To help with that I've designed this hood which you can 3D print slides onto the front of the display and helps its readability. If you'd like to add one of these to yours, you'll find a link to it in the description below. If you want to find out when we build our coffee dispensing version, add your vote to this display by subscribing below and ringing that bell icon. And until next time, ciao for now.